Yeah, this is Dave from CheapBooks.com. I'm playing World of Tanks. Uh, this is a T26E4. It is a replay. So I have already played the game. Uh, this is the T26E4 Super Pershing. It's an American uh, Tier 8 medium tank. And the map is Sand River. Uh, this tank is similar to the M26 Pershing. Uh, this tank also has spaced armor. It has a large gun on the front. This was actually one of the first tanks I ever owned. The first week that I played um, World of Tanks, I bought one of these tanks because it was the least expensive Tier 8 tank. And I was a lousy player. My win rate was 38%. And I played hundreds of games with this tank in the first couple of weeks. And uh, my stats were just absolutely awful. And when you use programs like Noob Meter, I mean, even though it's a Tier 8 tank, my numbers are skewed poorly because I was just a novice when I was playing. So that's why you don't want to trust... You can't trust uh, things like Noob Meter. They're just meaningless statistics. This is a case where I should have uh, fired manually instead of using the auto-aim. And now it's too late. So I'm in the center of the map, and the reason... The reason why I'm in the center of the map, you'll hear me say this often, is because when you're in the center of the map, you can shoot at tanks in all directions. You, you get uh, more targets to shoot at. You, do, you might even do more spotting. And it is very dangerous. You have to be able to hide because everybody will shoot at you if they see you. So that's why I'm in the center of the map. You gotta be very careful to not be spotted. Now, that's a perfect example of where using auto-aim can be good or bad, and, and the good thing about it is it locks the gun so the gun doesn't bounce around. Um, some tanks, if you hit a little bump, the gun will bounce all over the place. But uh, the disadvantage is you have to expose more of your tank in order to hit that enemy because you're aiming uh, at a lower part of the tank when you could just as well just hit it at the top, at the tip. Uh, so I did it knowing that I would probably have a safe shot, and that's the we reason why I did it with the auto-aim. And plus, I'm keeping an eye on all the tanks around me. So if I was threatened by another tank, I would back off immediately. And you can't do it with the scoping mode. Now, in that sort of a case, the time to shoot is either when the tank turns or when it stops for whatever reason, or if it gets tracked. Uh, usually, you wait for it to turn because when it turns, it will uh, be in your line for a longer amount of time, uh, which means that your gun will be lined up with the tank while it's turning. And it may even slow down a little, so um, that's what you hope for. Or to crest the hill, but it didn't do any of those things, and uh, someone else obviously killed it. Over here we've got a tank. It looks like a chi -ri. I think he's going to last a while. He's... Okay, so there was an example where... I used the auto-aim, but I could have done it manually. I did shoot manually, but I waited too long. I should have done it sooner. I would have had a clear shot easily, and I would not have to expose myself as much. With a tank that's far away, it won't make a difference, but with a tank that's close, it definitely does. Here's an example where I move to the scope. Enemy armor is damaged. 
Lots of targets. There are targets everywhere. I was so excited. It's like, oh, look, another one! Now, in this type of a case, you go, you shoot, you disappear, and there's nothing they can do about it. You can see it's very dangerous. We got a lot of tanks over here. Target acquired. Penetration. Got one kill. Ally showed up. You definitely want a tank that has good gun depression. Enemy armor is destroyed. Okay, I don't know who was shooting at me, but they didn't really do any damage, so... It's not gonna stop me. With the auto-aim, you really can't trust it, because sometimes it will say you have a clear shot, but you really don't. And uh, sometimes it'll say you don't have a clear shot, and then you will get the shot. So sometimes, even if it says that it's blocked, I still shoot anyway, and sometimes it does uh, hit the tank where it was exposed, uh, because the shot is wild. Off target, but still hits. Now in this case, I'm not going to go all the way up to the top of the hill anymore. I'm just going to go enough to get a shot on this tank. Enemy is hit. Penetration. Now you'll notice that I'm zoomed in on the scope. And because he was reversing away from me, I left it on the auto-aim. But if he were going laterally, if he were driving in one direction or the other, I probably would have turned the auto-aim off and aimed manually. Where'd they go? So that was with the auto aim off. Ready to fire. Now this is one to aim the gun, which makes it a lot easier. Got him. And he was an easy kill. So that's four kills, T twenty six E four Super Pershing. Target acquired. I still have I still have most of my health. You don't want to hit an ally, so I zoomed in to make sure I didn't have an ally in front of my shot. Target unlocked. Ready to fire. It's like I said, I'm const constantly turning it on and off.
waiting for that reload. Now, I was just going to say I was a uh, one shot. Um, okay, so that is the uh, T26E4. I got four kills in Map of Sand River. There's also a counter. When people use the auto aim on you, there's a way to take advantage of them because when you can shoot at them when they can't shoot at you. So that's one of the things you do have to be aware of. And you can definitely take advantage of that when you play against people. If I think people are using auto aim, sometimes what I do is uh, I uh, take advantage of that weakness. Now you'll note that I'm notifying my team that they got to go to the base and uh, they probably don't care. I don't know how this game turns out. Let's advance it a little bit. They only have that one tank left. I remember this, a fight going on. I don't think my IS-3 is going to survive. I think he's going to die. I think the ELC is going to try and take a lucky shot. And I think the Crusader... Oh no, that's ran out of time. So I guess it was another game where the SPG arrives and the SPG finishes him off. Okay, so that's a T26E4 Super Pershing. Uh, the map was Sand River. I got four kills. Uh, that was a assault battle mode. If you have any questions or comments, please post below.